we've already sort of talked about the relationship between average rate of change and whether or not a function is a linear function. Right? Um, what is the connection? Do you remember how we were framing that? So the connection between these two is that a function is linear when its average rate of change is always constant, always the same. Right? No matter which two points that I select on the graph, I compute the slope that joins those two points. For a linear function, that slope is always the same from point to point. Any pair of points I pick, I get the same answer for the average rate of change at the end of the day. Um, and so as you might expect, for the other types of functions that we're going to study this semester, that's not true. Right? The average rate of change does vary for any other type of function from one point to the next. Um, but that's the connection between the two sets of, of ideas we're going to talk about today. Average rate of change is something we can compute for any function relationship, whether we understand it as a data table, whether we understand it as a graph, whether we understand it as a formula, and you're going to have a chance to practice sort of all three of those types of information today. Oops. Um, but in all cases, it's going to have the same meaning, the same kind of interpretation. So that's the, the three activities we're going to do in this section are going to get you used to thinking in those three different ways about how to take the information you're given about a function and think about how to compute the average rate of change and what does that average rate of change actually tell us. So let's get started with that second activity in this section, activity 1.3.2. Um, which gives you some population data from Kent County, Ottawa County, there's a couple of counties in Michigan, which is where the author of this book happens to teach. Um, and you're asked some questions about average rate of change coming from these data tables. So we don't have a formula to describe the population over time. We just have a set of data points. But that needs to be enough for us in this problem. So one of the hard things about getting up to speed with functions is that mathematicians, for whatever reason, decide to use the same notation for functions as we do for anything else that uses parentheses in mathematics, like multiplying and all kinds of other stuff. So keeping that straight is really crucial, and it's hard to do in the beginning. So when you read this notation, read it, f of a, the function f applied to a. The value of f when the input is a gives me an output, f of a. So for example, in a table of data, if I'm keeping track of my independent variables, my input variables on one row, then the output values on the other row, these are the values of the function, in this case we're calling the function k, uh, applied to each of those inputs. So another way to say that is that if I take any input value like 1990, then the function applied to that input value, by definition, is the entry in the other row that that corresponds to. So k of 1990 is the y value when the x value is 1990, if that makes sense. So making sure that we keep that straight is going to be the key to how we correspond the notation that we use in algebra, the formulas, with the other work that we do numerically and graphically with average rate of change today. The, often the trickiest part of this is really just sort of unwrapping that notation, the, the notation that we use to represent functions, right? this f of a business. Um, knowing what, for example, is the difference between writing 2010, writing f of 2010, or k of 2010, or whatever your function happens to be called, and then writing the value of that thing. I think you know, one of the things that I often see um, is that sometimes that k will end up sticking around too long. Like it'll still be here um, when the k has already done its work. That's a common uh, thing to do. Um, but yeah, once you've used, once you sort of looked up the value of the function when the input is 2010 and gotten a number like this one, um, then you don't need this function sitting around here anymore. It's sort of, it's, it's done its work. So in this first example, if I'm computing the average rate of change of the Kent County population between the years 1990 and 2010, what am I doing? I'm subtracting the output values, which is the number of people, the population in that county, between 2010 and 1990, so 602,000 minus 500,000 people and dividing that by the difference in the inputs, which in this case are the years, 2010 minus 1990. That difference is 20 years. So let's slow this calculation down, because often what people will do right here is they'll just write a number and be done. But I actually want to put the intermediate step in between. What do you get when you subtract 602,622 minus 500,631? What number is that? OK, 101,911. And the units on that number? People. people. So it's a, a bunch of people, enough to fill up the University of Michigan football stadium. Uh, and then downstairs, we have 20 years. Right? OK. Um, so 
maybe let's slow down and for a minute and just tell me what each of those numbers means. 991, thank you. There we go. So what is that number then? 101,991. What is that number actually telling us? It's the difference in the population between those two years, right? So between, here, let me write it this way. Between 1990 and 2010, what would we say is happening here? Yes. Between 1990 and 2010, 101,991 people did what? Born. Yeah, maybe they were born, maybe they moved in, whatever, right? The population of Kent County went up. So 101,000 people uh, were added. I'll just kind of say that, right? Were added to the Kent County population. Right? So that's what that numerator is telling me, right? Just by subtracting those two values, I've gotten an absolute difference, an absolute amount of change. Um, and then what's the denominator telling me? How much time has passed, right? During those 20 years, during this 20 year period. Or maybe even a better way to say that is that that's how many people were added to the population as 20 was added to the years. Maybe another way to think about that. 20 was added to the year that we see on the calendar, right? And so each of those two numbers has its own individual interpretation, right, in terms of a number of people and in terms of a number of years. And it's when we divide them, so when you divide these two things, what did you end up getting? Actually. 9,091. You end up getting this number, 5,099.55. Um, what are the units on that number? People divided by years. This is another reason to write the units next to your quantities in the process here, to remind yourself that I can't divide two measured quantities without also dividing their units. People on the top, years on the bottom. And so the derived unit we get here is people divided by years. Or sometimes, as, as you just said, Melanie, this we read as people per year. Right? Per always has that meaning of dividing. Right? So 5,099.55 people per year. So put that into a sentence. What is that actually telling me about Kent County in this example? Um, increases 5,099.55 people per year. People per year, right. That is the average rate at which the population is increasing over these 20 years. Now, we don't know, based on the data that's given here, whether it was increasing steadily at this many people every year, right? Uh, in fact, this 2,000 data point might help us to check whether that was, in fact, true. Um, but we can't expect that it's necessarily going to have happened like that every year. This is just looking on average, right? Across the whole 20 years, if we know nothing else other than where we started and where we finished, right, then what we're getting here is that average rate of change. Uh, that, right, over that 20 year period, on average, the population increased by 5,099 people per year. How would we use this information? So I, I want to talk about part E, but I want to actually change it to be able to use Kent County's data because we haven't computed anything with Ottawa yet. Um, so let's change the question to ask about Kent County. Let's suppose I wanted to know, uh, let's go actually a little further out, 2025. Suppose I wanted to estimate the population of Kent County in 2025 just using the number that we just computed. 5,099.55. How might I do that? What do you think? So the question asks us, how might we forecast the population of Kent County in 2025 just based on the information that we have so far? So what was your strategy? What I heard from your groups is, well, 2025 is 15 years past the end of my data in 2010, right? So what I would like is I'd like to figure out how many people we need to add to the 2010 population to forecast 15 years into the future. Now, how do we get an amount of people if we know, if, or let, me, let, me, let me ask it this way. I know the, uh, the amount of time that I need to be able to forecast. I need to be able to forecast 15 years into the future, right? I don't know the amount of people, question mark, but what is the quantity that relates the amount of people to the amount of time? What's the missing link here? People per year. People per year, the rate. 
This is nothing more than just a dressed up distance equals rate times time thing, right? That is the definition, the very definition of what a rate is. It's an amount change in one thing divided by an amount change in the other thing. Um, and the other thing here is time, so this rate really does have the meaning of like a, a rate in time, right? And the rate, well, how do I know what rate the population is gonna change over those 15 years? What would be our guess? Only information we have was the one we just computed, right? Um, if all we knew was that number, 5,099.55 people per year, right? Then the amount of people by which the population is expected to change over those 15 years is just going to be the rate times the time. So if you took this strategy, you multiplied these two numbers out, what did you get? Seventy. What did you get here? Seven thousand six hundred forty-three. Seven six four three. I think we might be we might be missing a decimal place here. Uh, I think I need. I think I'm missing a digit before the decimal point here. Ah, there we go. Thank you. See, I knew the order of magnitude wasn't quite right. Right. So, based on our information, we would expect that the amount of people would have changed in that 15-year period by this many people. This many more people should have moved in or been born or whatever, added to the population of Kent County between 2010 and 2025. So, how do I find out the population in 2025? Add it to the y value that we had previously, right? So, I'm just going to add plus 7649. Nope, missed that digit, 493. Uh, and what did you get there? Six. What? <laughs> All right. Uh, 6791152. 6791152. Well, let's just round it, round it down. There we go. Right. So that is the key, right? That's why we care about a rate. A rate helps us to take information about the change in one of my quantities and translate it into information about change in the other one, right? Because my function represents a relationship between these two changes, if I know the rate at which that change occurs, and I know a change in one of my quantities, I can use this same strategy to find a change in the other. Right? How do I go 15 years into the future? Take those 15 years, multiply them by my rate of change of the amount of people, and it will tell me the amount of people that I expect to change.